Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I am here with... Uh, Rick Mainz, the uh, head of the Nostalgia Department at Chaosium. <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for taking the time to talk to us about role-playing games, specifically about ElfQuest, the official role-playing game, coming out again for Chaosium for their uh, 40th anniversary release, if I remember yeah. that. Next Tuesday on the 29th of October, we'll be launching our ElfQuest Classic Deluxe Kickstarter, which coincides with the 40th anniversary of us originally publishing the game back in 1984. That's amazing. Funny how uh, how all that time goes by. I still remember collecting ElfQuest when I was really young. But uh, but yeah, I, I was very surprised to see that they were there, that Chaos was producing this again, because uh, it's been so long. If I may ask, uh, what what led to the to the idea of, of hey, let's just reprint this again? Well, it goes back to the C two E two, the uh, Comics Convention and Electronics Expo in Chicago, held annually, where we were invited to attend because they were trying to build up their role playing games area, so they kind of had RPG Alley, so to speak, and you know with a really attractive booth price and such, and so Chaosium was an exhibitor. This was back in about 2017, 2018. And Wendy and Richard Peeney, the creators of ElfQuest Comics, going back to the 70s, they were there. You know, Wendy is doodling character sketches and signing autographs. And so is Richard. Uh, you know, they're, they have their artist table in the artist alley. And I went over and said hello. And, you know, said I was with Chaosium. And, of course, I was wearing the Chaosium tuxedo T-shirt, as we call them. So, and just introduced myself and got to chatting with them. And I don't remember who brought it up. It doesn't really matter. But it was very quickly obvious that they were enthusiastic about getting the RPG back into print, as were we. Because we had just done RuneQuest Classic at that time. And they had heard about that. And they thought that was fantastic. And so they, you know, it took us a while to finally get here, but we, we signed a deal and, you know, COVID kind of slowed it down for a little bit as well. But in the end, you know, we, we got the deal to bring it back because we have a, a number of fans that remember it fondly from back in the day, played it back in the 80s, maybe 90s. And of course, there are tens of thousands, if not many more than that, of the ElfQuest graphic novel series, which has been in development, you know, for 50 years. So, you know, almost 50 years. And so there's a lot of desire to give the game a try. And for viewers out there, if you haven't Googled yet what ElfQuest uh, is before watching this video, um, not only is it a series of fantastic um, um, fantasy adventures i guess it's fantasy sci-fi i somewhere somewhere in that line it's it it started out as fantasy but it's gone into science fiction as well especially futuristic you know later graphic novels have definitely had futuristic topics yeah but they're also very famous for being one of the really first breakthrough um indie creators to be yeah. really successful in their they, field they, wendy and richard are definitely trailblazers let me ask you this so uh, i'm i've always been fascinated with the uh, reproduction process, uh, maybe because mm -hmm. I, I, outside of this, I do a lot of design work, um, and people I think are kind of spoiled in thinking like, oh, if if something's um, digital, you can easily just reproduce it. But this is forty years ago, before digital. I don't know if that was just a dream back then. Um, there, there was a transition going on in the eighties, where yeah. a lot of early RPGs were done with cut and paste. They, they were not done on computers, especially because a lot of RPG companies were very small operations. A lot of them, the companies just had a few employees. Chaosium at that time had maybe about a dozen people working for it between the warehouse and production and everything else. And so they had thin cardboard storyboards for two page spreads where they would type up one of, if it was two column text, they would type up the two columns individually, paste them on. They would then have to, for the art, take it from the artists and get it camera ready as it was known, but they would paste those on. If they had any other uh, different information, like if it was a table that usually had to be recreated separately and then paste it onto that page. And so, and of course, if there was any edits, 
somebody realized it was a typo, they would cut out that word and paste in the correct spelling or maybe replace a paragraph. But it was all, you know, nowadays we always think of cut and paste as control C, control V, you know, and so on. But back then it was with an X-Acto knife and paper and cardboard. And so all the original ElfQuest material, be it the original box set, the uh, supplements, you know, Elf War, Elf uh, Sea Elves, the Elf Quest Companion, and so on, those were all done on those cut and paste storyboards, and there was no electronic anything. And as as a consequence, there were never any PDFs created from it because PDFs basically didn't exist at that time, and so there was no electronic version. And un- unfortunately, we don't have those storyboards anymore we we had a we have a number of classic projects that we still have the storyboards for and they're in the archives and they're fantastic but we don't have any of that for elf quest wow so if i may ask um uh so i know you've done two classic reproductions you've done room quest and um uh, the original call of cthulhu editions mm-hmm. um so for for this was it how difficult was the process of of converting everything to this format it's um, it's time consuming, but you know, technology is such that, especially if you have a, a two page large format scanner, which we have at Chaosium, uh, you know, they're not cheap, but they're definitely professional archive quality scanners. You know, they, they cost a few thousand dollars, but you can scan in a two page spread. And, and fortunately between my personal collection and what's in the archives, we have very good condition copies of all the books. Like, you know, this is the book of CLs that I, I scanned in. Uh, this is, you know, L4 that I scanned in. Just put it on the scanner, scan in all the pages. And then we use OCR programs, you know, that will then be able to, you identify what you want it to basically, op, you know, uh, optical character recognition OCR. It then puts all the words into a Microsoft Word file, which we have to clean up and edit it because it's not perfect, but it's about 98, 99%, especially since we have really good quality uh, originals to scan in. So we create a Microsoft Word text file, and then we take individual scans of each piece of art from in the inside the books. And because they're black and white, they tend to be fairly good quality that don't take too long to clean up. And we clean those up in Photoshop. And so then we have a, a Word file and art files that we put together in Adobe Creative Suite using InDesign to do the final layout. And were you able to bring everything from the original box set to this one? And just to let viewers know, um, this this came with a, the original came with a whole bunch of different things that was like at least like, what, four booklets at least? Plus a well, map? You know, I'm, I'm happy to talk through it because I just happen to have one of the box sets here. And so, you know, we, we scanned in the box. Uh, luckily, Wendy and Richard Peeney have a large archive of basically all, you know, Warp Graphics, their company, uh, that they have all the art digitally now. And so they've been going through their old graphic novels, getting it scanned in, cleaned up. So like the, you know, the, the cover art, they have, you know, just the art itself. Sorry, I'm getting used to the camera angle here, uh, you know, scanned in high resolution so we can then combine it with words. So we get the highest quality of that. But yeah, in the original box set, you know, there's the, uh, world book, there's an elf book, and then there are a whole series of handouts. So yeah, we're going to be you know, we, we got the Elf book scanned in and OCR and cleaned up. We got the uh, World book scanned in, OCR and cleaned up. And then, of course, there's a whole bunch of handouts from the standard what's in a box through various uh, reference sheets, examples of play. And we're, we're just getting all of these. They're all scanned in and cleaned up and getting them relayed out uh, just so we are creating high quality searchable PDFs of every single product that way. If you just want to back it at a digital level, you know, some people don't have a lot of room for shelves like I do. They can just buy the PDFs and we're creating all that fresh. So they will be, you know, modern quality PDFs. But, you know, even even the original map, you know, we've got access to big sheet fed drum scanners that allow us to scan in the, the whole map in one shot. We just have to Photoshop the creases off of the scan. And so we have everything digitally now and very close to having the, you know, those PDFs ready. So 
shortly after the Kickstarter closes, we'll be able to send out PDFs to the backers. You know, even they're getting the physical box, they get the PDFs included for free, or if they're just backing at the electronic level, they'll have those shortly after the Kickstarter closes. Very, very silly question. I might take this out of the interview, but will this contain, I, I don't know why I love this, but sometimes the old boxes have these like postcards or things that, you know, even though they're probably, you will not get an answer back. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to answer that because, you know, in the box, there is the little Chaosium postcard that, you know, it, it's not the kind of thing you'd probably fill out anymore, but it's got your, oh, hi, Chaosium. I just bought your game blank. Please send me your latest info and put me on your mailing list. I, you know, I am very tempted because it's only a few cents to include the postcard. Uh, so if people wanted to place a stamp on it and mail it into Chaosium, they could do that. The one thing that we have provided electronically, but we didn't actually print out, is our box sets had the wonderful old Chaosium game catalogs in them from back in the day. You know, these might be 12 pages of all the, oh, here's the latest products that are coming out. And, you know, depending on when you got the set, it would have different ones in there. Uh, you know, because they we reprinted the box set a couple of times. So there, there are different catalogs, but now we... we 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 actually did create a PDF of this, and we would pr probably include a PDF, but we wouldn't print out the actual catalog since it's no longer, you know, actual product you can buy anymore. All the stuff is long out of print, except for the stuff we brought back as classics. So, hmm. so oh yeah, no, that's tempting. I, I love that kind of stuff. We we certainly did PDFs with Call of Cthulhu Classic of a catalog and the reader response card and things like that. Happy, happy to at least digitally provide all those things. Now, I know sometime later there was a, a core rulebook released. Many people consider the 1980s the golden age of Chaosium because that's when, you know, starting with, you know, the RuneQuest two inch box set, the Call of Cthulhu two inch box set, the Stormbringer two inch box set, those all came out within a year or so of each other. And then, of course, they switched to one-inch box sets for a lot of the classic supplements, be it Borderlands, Pavis, Big Rubble, Spawn of Azathoth, Gaslight, National of Thotep, of course, ElfQuest, Ringworld. These all first came out. You know, they got a whole slew of them on my shelf back there, all the one- and two-inch box sets that Chaosium did. That people love them. And, of course, those are fragile things. They were they were done on, you know, without trying to be funny about it, they were done with pretty flimsy cardboard. They don't stand the test of time very well. And so a lot of people, they don't like even using their box set for anything. They'd rather keep it on the shelf, even opening it up to take the books out. Of course, a few lucky collectors still have theirs in the shrink, <laughs> and they're certainly not going to open it up to, you know, take it off the shrink. But in the end, people love the boxes. I certainly do. I have fond memories of, you know, our my gaming group where, uh, you know, Tim Webster was running Call of Cthulhu and he brought that two inch box set to the table for the first time. It's like, here's what we're going to play. And then his brother, Tom, he ran Stormbringer and had the two inch box set of Stormbringer. And we had the two inch box of RuneQuest. We played those games and loved them. And so we wanted to have it come in a box. People really are requesting that. And also we've made it a much stronger, more durable, uh, you know, two millimeter, two millimeter card stock box. We got a lot of rave reviews about the Call of Cthulhu two inch box in particular. It's our standard, as we call it, bomb proof box. And, and, and people really like it. But let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the crowdfunding campaign. Uh, what, um, what are your, what are the plans exactly? Are there any like uh, stretch goals or anything like that? We, we have stretch goals. Some of them will seem very similar to what we did with Call of Cthulhu. Uh, some of them are, are, are brand new things that never did exist. Like ElfQuest never had its own GM screen or Dungeon Master screen. And so we're going to be creating a three panel GM screen for uh, the ElfQuest game. It's going to fit in the box, you know, so the classic fold it up, put it in the box. And it's going to have all the tables that you need to run the game. Plus, it's going to have some not form not formerly used in the game uh full color art on the player facing side of the screen you know three classic uh paintings by wendy peeney that we're going to have as, on the three panel screen so art that wasn't used in the game originally but very iconic art from the 80s in particular that'll be on the gm screen we're also going to 
have a, you know, deluxify the dice and we're going to be doing a few other extra bits of information because there are a lot of ElfQuest personalities that were developed over the decades, iconic characters, because, you know, when the ElfQuest RPG came out, there were only the, the original, you know, graphic novels, you know, the, the journey to sorrows End and so on. It, it was a very compact set of stories that we covered in the game. So it basically covered all the novels that have been published as of 1984, 85, but that was it. And of course, a lot has come after it. There are a lot of iconic characters that people might want to play. And so we're going to have some stretch goals about bringing some of that slightly newer material in very true to the, you know, the elf quest rules. Oh, you know, so that way, if you want to play certain characters, there'll be the, the pre-gen character sheet for that person already in there and things like that. So we, we are going to be adding some new material. It's going to, it, it's going to make the Kickstarter take a little longer to fulfill, but we're talking weeks because we're getting it all prepared. If the stretch goals are met, those characters are going to go into the appropriate book. The character sheets will go into the box, things like that. And uh, just like the, one of the, one of my favorite stretch goals that we're going to have is a world map because the map in the box set is just of a specific continent for the world of two moons, but it's not the whole world. And so there's a, a big desire to have a good high quality world map. And so we're working with the peenies to create that world map because we also not only want to appeal to the gamers, we want to appeal to people who might want to try the game for the first time, not, Oh, I bought an 84. I'm looking to get it again. And of course, all the ElfQuest graphic novel readers who they would very much like to have a poster map of the whole world of a boat. So if I wanted to start up like a big campaign with ElfQuest and I wanted to maybe use elements of, of, of RuneQuest, maybe, you know, using the basic role playing game uh, rule system as well. Um, uh, how how easy would that be? It's incredibly easy. I El The ElfQuest rule system is part of the basic role-playing family. It was a slightly tweaked version of RuneQuest 2 and a little bit of RuneQuest 3. So it's closer to RuneQuest than any other published game we did. And so, because you know, it's the, the primary author right on the cover, you know, the, the, the first author is Steve Perrin. So mm -hmm. Steve Perrin was the RuneQuest rules writer. He was involved with all the early 80s Chaosium games. But... Uh, you know, if you are familiar with Call of Cthulhu rules, it'd be easy to switch over to ElfQuest. If you're familiar with the RuneQuest rules, it'd be super easy to switch over. If, if you know any of our main games, you pretty much know 80% of the rules for any of them. It's just tweaked for the particular setting. Hmm. And, and if I may ask, do you think if, um, um, depending on the success of this uh, crowdfunding project, do you think that possibly the peonies might be interested in helping out with maybe more source books in the future? What, or do you feel like this is like a one done type of deal? Uh, a lot of it depends on the reaction from the Kickstarter and people getting the game, playing the game and where we go from here. We certainly have the opportunity to produce more material. The peonies are very happy to see that. Uh, they, they, we, we have an arrangement with them, a, a licensing deal, so that if we if we want to do more, uh, this is kind of a big test balloon to see where it goes from here. It, it can be the end of it. If it's not that popular, people are like, well, maybe this isn't what we really want. But chances are, based on the reaction we're expecting, it could open up uh, brand new supplements, uh, even a newer, newer edition of the rules over time. Based on, you know, a lot of role playing techniques and preferences have changed over the last 40 years. And so th this could very well just be the start of a, a whole series of new things coming out related to ElfQuest. Why do you think ElfQuest has endured for so long? Well, they're great stories. They, they you know, I mean, the, the peenies are, you know, professional writers. They, they know how to tell great stories. They know how to engage with an audience. They've had a lot of feedback over the years on, you know, what the fans really like. And they're very good at, you know, providing the experience that the, the fans have grown to know and love over decades. They've made it their life's work. And its success is a, a testament to their, you know, ability and skill. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to revisit all this as I've been reading more, you know, because I, I didn't play ElfQuest when it came out because it's when I went off to, you know, college. 
and I kind of took a break from role playing while I was at college. I only only played once in a great while. Usually games I already knew how to play, so I had some Elf Quest material, but it just kind of I, I didn't actively play it back then. So it, to me, it's great revisiting this and and getting a chance to give it a more formal try than back in the day. Being that uh, last two um, box sets um, reprints were successful, and I can't imagine this not being successful as well. Um, do you see that Chaos might be interested in more box sets like these in the future? You know, as we acquire the rights to do them, absolutely. You know, we don't have the rights to like Ring World, for example, not to pick on anybody in particular. But, you know, if, if we could get the rights back, of course we would. And it's one of these things where uh, they've all been very successful. Uh, we have all the material written already. And so it, you know, and because they're mainly black and white products in terms of the internal pages and all that, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something that is profitable for us and the fans love it. So yes, we would, there are very few box sets that would, we'd be like, nah, we'd never want to do that one again. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I heard that there was dice included in the Elf Quest yes. box set. Would there be dice included in a new one as well? Yes, we're going to start with, you know, the, the came with two D20s and three D6, where it's the starting point, that's what's in the box. But there's a, a modest stretch goal to deluxify those up to like we did with Call of Cthulhu Classic, where we had a whole sleeve of the, we, they're, they're known as the Ruby Anniversary. They're not, this, these are not the dice we're going to use for ElfQuest, but yeah, we, we kind of deluxified the dice a fair bit. So yeah, we'll have a whole set of those in the box if we meet the stretch goal and I have every belief we'll be, you know, who doesn't want more dice? Yeah. Yeah, that's sort of why I ask. Cause I, I love, especially if it's like specialty dice, I'm just, I'm yeah. Just, I mean, you know, the, the original dice were the, you know, Chaosium basically bought the cheapest bulk dice they could from, you know, either Luzachi or, you know, Chessex or whoever had the best prices. And they had just big bowls of those dice and they would, you know, for this one, they just grabbed two D20s and three D6 and they went into the box rattling around. And, you know, because we've actually had people ask, you know, what what were the original dice specifically like? And the unfortunate answer is they kind of mixed and matched whatever was in that bowl. And so as long as you got two D20s and three D6, that's what you got. So there, there there's no definitive single. I mean, there's a lot of commonality, but. There, there was variation for, you know, what actual specific dice went in the box. We're, we're not doing that, though. We've we got to, you know, we're working with a dice manufacturer to, you know, here's the specific set of dice and the little plastic sleeves that are rattling around the box. And we'll, we'll take a very similar approach we did with Call of Cthulhu Classic. Mm. Um, again, for anyone that, that's that's new to this, um, um, we, we haven't talked really, well, we talked a little bit about what's in the, the box set. Before, uh, but anyone new that's hearing about this for the first time and is curious to know uh, what's contained in this box set, uh, I assume it has the typical stuff of what what characters you can play uh, in a set of adventures. Well, I I'm happy to give you a basic rundown of the contents. Mm -hmm. I mean the the world book covers the world of ElfQuest, the world of Two Moons, that one continent in particular, with you know about. 48 pages of background of just here's the world of elf quest and the main tropes of it you know some main characters it introduces and so on and then the larger elf book is that's your character creation the rule system itself you know because the, the rule book the rule book itself is 80 pages and so that's for character creation through how to do combat you know, skill resolution, things like that, the magic system, all those things. That's all in the 80 page uh, elf book. And then you have the Elf Quest Companion, which had a lot of errata in it um, that we're incorporating into it. So the actual text is updated. So you don't have to look at the errata sheet and then do that in your head or, you know, mark it up with a lot of people did with a pencil or whatever. We're, we're including all that errata and changes into the actual text. So nobody needs to worry about that anymore. We're going to include the errata in the companion because that way you get the best of both worlds. It's in the book, but you got it as a separate document. If you're wondering what changed between first and second edition. And because one of the sneaky secrets that a lot of people don't know about the second edition, I'd, I'd like to get to in just a couple minutes, but since I'm talking through the books, uh, L4 
is a mini campaign of scenarios. The Elf Quest Companion also has scenarios in it. And Sea Elves is not only does it introduce the Sea Elves into the game in terms of their stats and all that and talks about their aquatic style of life, but it also has adventures in it as well. And so, yes, there are adventures included uh, throughout. And so they'll be getting all those. So everything you need to play plus stuff to play. Is there anything else about this? I, you mentioned that you're going to get back to something. Um, yeah. Like you've got the you've got the Elf Quest second edition cover, you know, on our yes. screen next to us. And I, I I take it that's going to be in the video next to us. If that's okay, I can always take it out. No, no, I, I'm fine either way. I just was curious because I, I I don't need to hold it up so much if that's going to be next to us. But you know, the box set is wonderful, but of course that's the first edition. Several mm -hmm. printings, but it's the first edition. Now the Elf Quest second edition is a perfect bound book. And I, I'd never realized this at the time, you know, cause Chaosium's had hundreds of products, you know, like over 500 products come out over almost the last 50 years, you know, cause 2025 is our 50th anniversary of the company. And I wasn't as familiar with the second edition elf quest, because as I said, I didn't play it back in the day. And while I've, I've looked through all my books, I, I hadn't done a deeper dive on this until really we started doing the ElfQuest Classic Kickstarter, you know, gearing up for it, getting stuff scanned in, OCR'd into Microsoft Word, etc. You know, I, I love all things Chaosium, but I have to be brutally honest about the second edition. It's not really a second edition. And, it, okay, it, you know, it says up in the corner, second edition. But what they... <laughs> actually did i was kind of shocked they took the cut and paste layouts from the box set of the elf book and the world book and they changed the page numbers of those two books hope you don't mind me spending just a couple of minutes on no this. no no please, please. I'm, I'm, yeah I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious you know you got the elf book for example and i could go to one of the first pages of it And it talks about, like, it's got the introduction, okay? They literally, in the second edition book, other than changing the table of contents, they took the covers of those two books and put them in here for the chapter covers. And then they took, I'm just going to the page here because I want to show it. Like, well, to cut a long story short, they reused the entire layout of the box set. So like the example of play handouts is just in the book, the exact, just different page numbers, not relayed out, nothing changed. They did not include the errata, you, you know, the errata, the wonderful errata in the Elf Quest companion. They just took all the Elf Quest companion pages and put them toward the end of the book and they they yeah it's just oh by the way here, here here's the errata in the back <laughs> of the book it's not in the text and mm. so they they just took the layout pages for the elf book the world book and the companion and renumbered them and put them into this and they took all the individual handouts and put them into this the only thing that's actually new in this second edition are the wonderful color plates of art, you know, that, that Wendy and Richard Peeney had created. And so these are in there as new stuff, 12 color plates. That's the only thing new. I went through it page by page and I, I just started to, I get this real strong sense of deja vu because, oh, you think a second edition, they relayed it out, they added more content, but they didn't. All they did is they took three books and a bunch of handouts and made it this perfect bound book and changed the page numbers. And so it's calling really it a second edition, I mean, because people are like, oh, well, we, we want this in the box. Well, the thing is, this perfect bound book doesn't lay as flat. It's mm -hmm. harder to use. It's got all the GM information and all the player information in it. So why wouldn't we want a separate player's book, the elf book, separate from the GM's book, you know, and so 
and that way you've got two books which lay flatter you know all the handouts would you rather have the character sheets in a perfect bound book or would you rather have the character sheets and the other things at the table like you know in the original the character sheets of this wonderful 16 page book where you know we're not even going to have it stapled so if you just want to use the character sheets they're right there if if they're in this perfect bound book what are you going to do with them you're going to end up creasing the spine and ugh. or, or you, you'd have to tear them out and so yeah. you know you know the, the second edition book had one printing and then that was it now it was a few years after everything else had come out they, the chaos even moved away from doing box sets because they were rather expensive and, and the box printing prices went up, you know, and of course in today's money, it doesn't seem like much, but you know, when the box cost went from a dollar 50 to $2 and 50 cents, it really cut into their bottom line because this wonderful box set was 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so it makes a big difference when you add a buck to the, you know, the box printing cost. So they had to stop doing it in boxes. So I, I understand why they went to a perfect bound book, you know, people can look through it a lot more easily. You know, the, you know, the box sets had to be shrink wrapped. I, I, I get some of the utilitarian reasons for the change, but it, it, you know, when people, you know, expect this in the box, it's like, it actually works much better as all the individual handouts and booklets and all that. And you are giving up nothing. I mean, the 12 color plates that are brand new, we're going to have those as handouts that you can pass around the table versus just have it open in the book and, you know, you have to pass it around or whatever. We'll, we'll have just full color handouts. Mm. And that, and that's great. I prefer the box set definitely over the core rule book only because I, you don't know how many complaints I've heard about certain modules from other companies, uh, other adventures where they produce a book and there's like player's handbook material, player's handbook player's material in the beginning and then of course the adventure and you don't want to spoil the adventure by giving the book around to your to your players so having things separate i find yeah it's much easier because yeah the the second edition rule book has adventures in the back or sprinkled throughout it depending on where they were and so when you're having the players look at that they would have to ignore certain sections and of course there's always the temptation to peek yeah yes, well indeed, plus during indeed. play if the gm's running the adventure and then there's other things in the book you want to let the players reference. Like, oh, I want to look up a rule. You got to hand them the book with the adventure in it to look up the rule. Yeah. Versus we don't have to do that with all the separate books and all that. So I, since there, since there was no radical rewrites, changes, rule revisions, anything, the second edition book just isn't worth it. Well, excellent. Is, is, is there anything else about this project that you haven't mentioned that, that you would like to share? Well, I know we're going to have a deluxe backer level that it, it's going to be limited numbered edition and it's going to have an autograph print by the peenies in there. And oh. so for those that want to get that unique print and the numbered edition of the box set, we're going to have a, uh, you know, a deluxe backer level for that. And that's really exciting. And so, yeah, there, there's some, there's some extras that were not in the original that will uh, appeal to a variety of, of collectors in particular. Hmm. All right, so I have one last question for you. Um, if I was running this game and you had to make a character for it, uh, what character would you make? I, you know, I I really like some of the characters that are in the original content from the original stories because that's what I, I started rereading. Uh, and, and actually, my favorite characters are already in the box. So I, I'm not trying to be, you know, the, the stories I'm most familiar with the stories I enjoyed reading more recently, those characters are already in there, you know, Strider and so on. So I, 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 I don't have a, another answer, unfortunately, for you <laughs> other than those. I'm not, I'm not trying to weasel out. I, I just, I, I've mainly been focusing on the original stories that were related to this. So th this this box set also has uh, pre 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 generated characters. Of, oh yeah, of the characters from the comics. Oh okay. Uh, and, we're, and one of our stretch holes is going to be adding even more. So oh. that way they, instead of just the, you know, the 12, we're going to have 20, just like we're looking at a few extra creatures that might go into the box because there's some pretty cool elf quest creatures that have come out since 1984. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at some extras of things like that because we know that there are some, you know, just a few years after the original series was done, 
they have additional iconic characters that people would like. And so just to appeal to those that, oh, I've already got all the, you know, I've got the second edition book and I, I've got the box set. Well, there'll be things in there that they don't have that they can mm. get as part of this deluxe edition. That's why it's called a deluxe edition. It's not just because it's in a cool box, but there's extra material to a, appeal to people who already have all the originals. And, you know, they can just leave them on their collector shelf. They can have a, a, a much newer version with all the PDFs. Mm. Well, that's amazing. Um, uh, Rick, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about ElfQuest, the official yeah. role-playing game. My pleasure, Manny. And I'll put all the information in the description below so that you know where to check out the uh, the Kickstarter or Backer Kit. Kickstarter. It's on Kickstarter next Tuesday, so yeah. the 29th, so soon enough. Just wrapping Excellent. up the last little bits and pieces of effort on that so we can launch on time on Tuesday. Mm. So, yes, everyone, take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for having me on.